Yellowstone supervolcano, how a huge earthquake broke the seismometer because of too much shaking. This is by Callum Cahor on Express UK. The USGS Yellowstone Volcano Observatory scientists were put on high alert when an earthquake broke nearby seismographs. This is according to USGS scientists revealing. The Yellowstone Volcano, as we know, sits between the U.S. states of Wyoming, Montana, and Idaho, and inside the Yellowstone National Park. The caldera is under Yellowstone Lake. It's labeled, most of it is under Yellowstone Lake. It's labeled a supervolcano due to its capability to inflict disaster on a worldwide scale if another super eruption occurs. There have been uh, less than super eruptions, one 70,000 years ago, and about 80 eruptions since then. And also, um, the head geologist uh, at that time revealed that we're overdue by about 10,000 years. So, um, that's a little brief on Yellowstone supervolcano. It's labeled a supervolcano due to the capacity to uh, inflict such a disaster. Now, the last event of this kind has not occurred for more than 630,000 years, and a serious eruption at, at 70,000 years ago, which apparently makes it overdue. Now, the United States Geological Survey scientists were put on high alert in uh, a year after the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory was set up. It was set up in 2001, believe it or not, just recently, uh, after a BBC documentary on Yellowstone Supervolcano came out the year before, in the year 2000, and it urged the American government to set up a, a, an observatory right there at Yellowstone because they believed it was so dangerous and if it erupted, it could cause such damage that they had to put an observatory there and monitor it as closely as possible. But in the year 2002, a year after the uh, YVO was established, the scientists were put on high alert when the Denali earthquake occurred in Alaska. Denali earthquake. As we know, Alaska is full of volcanoes and earthquakes. This uh, earthquake was a magnitude 7.9, and that event was the largest recorded in the U.S. in 37 years. 7.9. That's what the scientists revealed. The scientist, the head scientist, Jacob Lowenstein, who is in charge of monitoring Yellowstone for the USGS, revealed his diagrams, and he had a lecture in Menlo Park, California, and this is where he had, he gave a lot of information out, and even the fact that it's 10,000 years overdue for eruption. He showed the shake waves produced by the Denali, Alaska earthquake. He says, anytime you have an earthquake, especially on a strip, strike slip fault, you get surface waves produced. We get strikes that fall, so we have subduction zones, and the whole of the western United States is a subduction zone, as we know, all of it. And that's where we have these huge quakes. He says those are the ones that do a lot of damage to buildings. And in the case of this particular earthquake, it sent big surface waves out in southeasterly direction, meaning, of course, down towards, from Alaska down towards uh, Canada, Vancouver, Washington State, Oregon, California, all the way down south. Uh, Southeasterly direction, and he says now even one of these little diamonds here represents a seismic station. Seismic stations. Dr. Lowenstein went on to explain, as he was looking at the map, how seismometers near Yellowstone failed to record the impact. Hmm. He added, the ones that are red are pegged out. They, they are clipped data because the surface waves that were coming from that earthquake were so big, even down in Montana and Wyoming, that the seismometers could not record the data. There was just too much shaking, and so it was what we call clipped. 
Whereas the blue stations where uh, the little bit, uh, there was a little bit less ground surface wave movement down into California, for example, these are figures from a paper by the University of Utah, Stefan Hussen, who was the main uh, author. Now remember, okay, big earthquakes are felt basically, you know, have seismometers way over the other side of the world uh, recording them. But the, uh, as we said, the uh, USGS heli plots, as I read to you uh, in summary in the previous video, having to do with the CMEs and if that uh, has anything to do with earthquakes and of course scientists have found that it, it, it's not a coincidence it does take place um, it, the whole earth is shaking after the Papua New Guinea quake everywhere is shaking even after the quake is over the earth is still ringing like a bell it's ringing and it's ringing and it's ringing and it's rattling and it, that was only a 7.5 but we have a tremendous amount of very big aftershocks. So the whole thing is like throwing big pebbles and little pebbles in a pond and you get all those ripples. Well that's how it is with the earthquakes uh, felt around the world and those ripples are still going on around the world. Uh, the heliplots are all blacked out with uh, earthquakes, recording earthquakes. Uh, so uh, that's how that earthquake from um, Denali, Alaska, was uh, felt in Yellowstone so much that the seismographs could not record it. They were clipped out, they were pegged out. Now, Dr. Lowenstein went on to explain how they discovered big earthquakes like these threaten to set off other earthquakes. Of course, we see that all the time. And we're not going to be surprised when we see down the lane of the fracture zone, for example, from Papua New Guinea, who knows where it's going to hit next? South to New Zealand, God forbid, because they're expecting a nine uh, magnitude down there. They've already warned their people. Or is it going to go up south towards uh, north toward Japan? Who knows? We're going, or is it going to go across the Pacific to uh, Hawaii? Uh, we don't know. It depends on the pressure on the blobs of the magma underneath uh, the Earth's crust. So yeah, it affects these earthquakes threatened to set off other earthquakes. And he continued, when the ground shaking got to Yellowstone, it set off small earthquakes. Magnitude 1s, 2s, and 3s. But they were felt. They were felt. They were felt. 1, 2, and 3. This is a remarkable example of something that wasn't known about until the early 90s. That is the phenomenon of triggered earthquakes. Of course, how could they not know this? It's just logical. Triggered earthquake. One earthquake triggers another earthquake. That's why they're so frightened that when you have a, an earthquake in a nearby area, not too far off from uh, Yellowstone, for example, California, or Manitoba, or Nevada, or uh, southwest Utah, all these areas are, by the way, volcanic areas as well. Uh, and volcanoes, as we know, are set on fault lines. Uh, and usually you have nice, uh, not, not too far off, you have rivers running by them as well, which are again on fault lines. Uh, they said that a supervolcano is not like a volcano. A supervolcano is more dangerous because the magma chamber is bigger and the roof is bigger, which means that even a moderate to small earthquake could uh, rupture and crack the roof of the magma chamber and that would uh, effectively give a, an eruption. So yeah, they talked about this in the Caldera Chronicles months before, explaining little by little. He says this is remarkable, they only knew about this in the early 1990s. How is that possible? Anyway, that's what he says here. This is the phenomena of the triggered earthquakes. You can have an earthquake at one location and the waves that are moving around the earth actually trigger earthquakes at other locations. Remember that they told us a while back in Caldera Chronicles that if you have an earthquake you can have it uh, hit and have an effect on the other half of the world, on the other, the other, the other side of the world. Can you imagine? 
Volcanoes typically erupt when molten rock, also known as magma, rises to the surface following the Earth's mantle melting. And it usually happens when the tectonic plates are pulling apart or where one plate is pushed down under another. This is a subduction zone we're talking about. But super eruptions have been known to happen following large regional earthquakes as they trigger unrest at the nearby volcano. And this is why scientists fear another big one earthquake could be enough to trigger a super eruption. God forbid. Now, we're not fear-mongering here. These are just reports from the geologists themselves, the people in charge of Yellowstone. And as we know, they're always very careful as to what they uh, reveal. And uh, they don't want to uh, uh, stress people out or uh, create a uh, fear-mongering type of an atmosphere. But they are careful, and I've noticed that they have sort of increased, for example, the amount of earthquakes that have taken place from the past eruption of 70,000 years ago. First they said it was 40 eruptions, then they said it was 60, then 70, now it's up to 80. And then they say that we're expecting an eruption is 10,000 years overdue. Um, so maybe they are just now finding this out. But in, in any event, they are informing us. And they're being conservative. So I'll leave a link below for you for this on Express UK. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media, and not certainly on, not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, and Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.